This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. My guest today is, I would say, a an energy revolutionary because I and a lot of other people are part of the energy efficiency establishment and we know exactly what we're doing. We know exactly why we're doing it. We can cite numbers all day long and twice on Sunday, including dollar numbers. And my guest, Mr. John Borland, CEO of JOB Technologies is about to turn all of that on his, his, our heads. This is going to be a very, very exciting program. So welcome, John. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you, Howard, for inviting me. So let's start off with, as you wanted to, Puerto Rico. We're all reading that the island was devastated. The production infrastructure was devastated, continues to be devastated. I think the majority of the population still is without electricity. And those of us, again, in the energy efficiency establishment say, let's do microgrids. We're going to have individualized power plants. We're going to feed off of solar. We're going to have batteries here which feed in and batteries feed out. And we're going to have our EVs with their big batteries. We're going to take off of them. And this microgrid is going to work like magic. And we will vastly reduce our dependence on fossil fuel because of all this solar powered energy on this microgrid. And you are saying, John, the heck with the microgrid. Let's just produce more of most of our own. This is for residential now, single family residential town townhouses. It produce most of our energy by PV and a couple other technologies. And then just when we need it on our high use days, then we feed into the grid. Correct. Very revolutionary. And we'll get into this later. You say the heck with efficiency, because we in the establishment say efficiency, 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 efficiency. And you say, nope, 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 can all be done from solar energy. And I did catch you on one thing, though, LEDs. You converted to LEDs. Those are the simplest, easiest. A six-year-old can convert to LEDs. Here's the light, Johnny. Screw it in. OK, Mom, got it. Pretty darn simple. But aside from that, you're saying we don't need to do all of these efficiency measures because we can take care of it all with the what's up on our roof the and harvesting our abundant sunshine and then distributing it in the right, at the right time in the right way. So why don't you, you wanted to start out with uh, Puerto Rico. Why don't, why don't you start out with Puerto Rico? Yes. Here. So, um, as I was telling Howard, to me, Puerto Rico has, has shown a, a good example of why we need 100% renewable energy mm -hmm. today. And by achieving 100% renewable energy on a residential level, you basically become off-grid. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you're no longer dependent on the utility. So Puerto Rico is a clear example where I think this morning they're saying it's still like 29% only have electricity yes. and 71% is and, still and without. It's been, and it's, over six, it's been six weeks now. Six weeks, yeah. Um, yeah. And so again, that's why if the people in Puerto Rico did what I've done for the last seven months, there would be an issue. Mm -hmm. And I also refer to um, uh, another example again is, you know, Hawaii being an island, again, it's even more isolated than Puerto Rico from mm -hmm. the mainland. And if those remember back in 2006, we had the earthquake on the Big Island. Mm -hmm. And Oahu and I lost power for 24 hours mm -hmm. because of the generators shut down because of the vibration. Mm -hmm. So again, if I had my system then, I would be happy just running off grid uh, and not relying on, mm -hmm. on the uh, utilities. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're very susceptible to you know, natural disasters, be it the earthquake or hurricanes. So that's why if you do this one home at a time on Oahu, basically we will get rid of the duck curb problem from HECO and in mm -hmm. fact, we'll save more money. If you look at the cost analysis, even if you do these so-called microgrid or utility scaled renewables, we'll still be charged from HECO at what, 20, say 25 cents a kilowatt hour. It's, uh, my latest bill was 28.47 cents. Well, yeah, mine was 30, 30, <laughs> okay. 30 yeah. cents per kilowatt hour. Mm -hmm. But um, I did the calculations for my current, what I call solar energy plus 
multiple storage option. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. My um, energy usage is about 3.7 cents a kilowatt hour. And so therefore, mm -hmm. at that low rate, why do you ever want to pay utility or pay HECO or pay anyone else when, again, if you do it yourself, you're at 3.7 cents a kilowatt. So that's mm -hmm. my estimation, which means you have um, solar PV electrical, you have mm -hmm. solar thermal for hot water, you have multiple storage. So I have both electrical battery storage, I have hot thermal storage for the mm -hmm. hot water, mm -hmm. and I also have cold thermal storage. And so by using mm -hmm. all that um, properly, and you also have to have the right home energy management system. Mm -hmm. And so that means, mm -hmm. you know, um, um, when, how to optimize your key home appliances. Mm -hmm. If you need to modify some of your key home, home appliances, like, like Howard mentioned about the lights. I used to have a plasma TV, a mm -hmm. large green TV. Mm -hmm. Luckily, it died last December. And so when I went and I bought an, an LED TV, mm -hmm. my, my electrical bill also went down yep. by going from plasma to LED. So there, there's another efficiency measure it, there. Exactly. Yeah. And I also mm -hmm. yeah, replaced all my light bulbs with the LED. So again, mm -hmm. that way, overnight, I'm only using two kilowatt energy for um, room lights. Mm -hmm. um, so all of those benefits and allow you to go off grid and use your battery overnight to um, mm -hmm. um, supply the energy. Okay, so let me back up to the duck curve for those of you uninitiated in the wonders of the energy world. With all of the PV panels that we in Hawaii have on our roofs today, the demand for electricity from HECO used to go get up to ramp up to speed around 9.30, 10 in the morning, and then was pretty flat through the day. It'd have a little afternoon peak, and it remained pretty flat, and then it would go up in the evening when all of us came home <clears throat> from our homes and schools, and all the tourists came home from shopping and whatnot. That was flat, a little bump. Then the PVs came along, and the middle of the day when the sun is hottest, the demand for electricity went down, 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 and then around when the sun started to go down, the demand would go up, 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 up. So you got this swoop and up. And this is the head of the duck up here, and this is the back of the duck down here. So your idea, John, is to manipulate things. Say, instead of just your one house, we had 100,000 single-family residences and townhouses. With your type of system, you would absorb a lot of that heat during the middle of the day to put in storage, and then you would use it whenever you gosh darn well wanted to use it. Right, because yeah. since you're not selling back to HECO, mm -hmm. um, HECO won't have this feed in into their um, utility. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, again, because you're storing it for night use with the battery, again, you're yeah. also not demanding from mm -hmm. HECO. So your overall, HECO overall level should go down and be flat. So yeah. it's good for utilities, and it's the cheapest, most economic way for the homeowners. And my mm -hmm. return on investment is 2.7 years based on that, this. That is absolutely amazing. Again, this is another completely revolutionary uh, offer that, that you're putting before us because we normally say PV plus storage plus this plus that, minimum six, seven years, and you've got it down to... Less eight. than three, yes. Yeah, 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 that's absolutely amazing. Maybe you could try to, to run the numbers for us a, a bit. Um, yes, so, well, it's easier if I had an equation to yeah. show. Or this, again, again, I had this one chart. Mm -hmm. um, so by not having the graphics, this is how I explain it. So um, before solar, I would be using, um, on an average, this is now based on my past five years HECO bill. Mm -hmm. um, it was 1,500 kilowatts a month, or roughly 47 kilowatt hour per day. That, that's, that's my normal. That's a lot, by the way. That, that's two and a half times your average home usage. That's why I'm surprised at yeah. how does the home usage average come out to 500 a month. That, that to me is mind boggling, mm -hmm. but I was at 1500. It, so basically, so, so being at mm -hmm. 47 um, kilowatts per, per, per day, mm -hmm. when I first added just solar and battery, the traditional stuff, it only dropped it by 50, 50%. Now, now by solar, you mean uh, Conventional PV, the PV with the battery storage added, that people say will save money. Mm -hmm. I wasn't saving money. It, it made my return on investment 16 years. Well, you did save money. You reduced your use by about half. Wasn't yes. That it? Yeah. But I put out a lot in capital yes, expense yes, to, yes, to yes. do that. Mm -hmm. So, 
Uh, that's, again, that's why, you know, should, would I, should I invest the money elsewhere for 16 years based on return or, or in the equipment for the yeah. solar? So I'm saying 16 years return on investment, that's better to do it in the stock acceptable. market or someplace yeah. else instead yeah. of in, yeah. in, in utility. So. so then you were unhappy with that 50% right. reduction. So I then so worked with my solar it. vendor and battery vendor. So working with both Poncho Solar and Tabuchi Electric, um, we, I had to install three different energy monitoring systems at mm -hmm. home because I wanted to identify the root cause of all of my energy usage. Mm -hmm. the, you know, uh, root, root, root cause meaning which appliances or which equipment in the home is, causes, the, causes uh, that draw and, and to when. what level. Yes. And when also. Right. Yeah. So um, the one hour resolution for the monitoring wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. Five minutes also wasn't good enough. You know, mm -hmm. I tried the Blue Planet Foundation Bigly approach Mm -hmm. That was five minute resolution. You need at least one minute resolution to see the energy spikes. Um, Me meaning, throughout the you, day. meaning you have to go minute by minute by minute. At least, yes. Use is going up, going down, going up, going down, yeah. yeah. For example, like the microwave oven, mm -hmm. you talk about you know, one minute to 90 seconds. So again, mm -hmm. the one minute interval clearly shows yeah. the spike mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. Or again, when your pool pump comes in in the morning, again, you can see the one minute spike from the pool pump ramping up. So you need to have the right resolution. Mm -hmm. So once we identified the root cause, I could then go and look to see what are the renewable energy options I have to replace um, mm -hmm. that, that grid by. So um, let's take the number one power usage is the electric hot water heater. Yep. So I also have solar thermal hot water. Okay. Uh, and so that's great um, most of the time. However, I still saw a deficiency where I would still have to you know, use grid by like on cloudy days or other days. So. Um, I then decided to use my solar PV energy mm -hmm. to power the electrical heater element. Power all of it or just just boost it beyond what the solar panels would supply? Well, they, they sort of run and complement each other mm -hmm. because the solar hot water really doesn't work until more later in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, however, if it's cloudy, then it's too late to wait till then. So, mm -hmm. I, so, mm -hmm. so the electrical may boost it up to about 135 degrees Fahrenheit, mm -hmm. and then the solar thermal will boost it or will supercharge it to at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit. And, and this is to create reserve. The right. hotter you your water in the full tank, day, yeah. the more reserve. So it's based on each yeah. family size. So mm -hmm. I use four full baths a day. Mm -hmm. And so that means I need to have all a that stored capacity yeah. Um, yeah. to do that. And on that cheery break, we need to take break number one where you barely even getting warmed up. John Borland, president of JOB Technologies, and I will be back in a moment. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. We have this crazy thing going on today. I was just walking by, and all these DJs and producers are set up all around the city. I just walked by, and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. had no musical talent and then sat down and kind of played some really nice sound. So we do it. Good afternoon again, Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii, with John Borlin, president of JOB Technologies. And before I forget, a disclaimer: uh, John is mentioning specific products. Neither I nor the State Energy Office nor Think Tech Hawaii endorses these products. These are simply here for illustrative purposes. Now, back to the fascinating stuff. Let me tackle this business of 3.7 cents a kilowatt hour. Again, yes. we think it's not possible, but you say your total cost was $29,500. That's for the panels, the whole system, total the battery, system cost. everything, and there's a, a three Insulation, different, everything. yeah, three different um, uh, energy management systems. I think 
Uh, you have to know how to, to monitor, right? Yeah, mo monitoring, monitoring, monitoring the yeah. energy usage system. Mm -hmm. And again, another key point of that is, yes. So, so everything um, is really re relies on the total cost of the system. Mm -hmm, and so, mm -hmm. because I was at several solar conferences, both in the U.S. and also in Europe a month ago, the cost of the system for the United States and in Hawaii is, I'm just surprised, three times more than Europe. So, for example, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the cost per watt in Europe is 80 euro cents per watt, which is about a dollar per oh, watt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so my friends in the Netherlands who installed home residential solar, they only paying a dollar a watt. Mm -hmm. My case in Hawaii, I actually looked at seven different vendors a year ago. Mm -hmm. The price went from like 320 a watt up to like 480 a watt, so there's a huge price difference. Mm -hmm. The national average in the US now is $2.80 a watt. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of other factors that affects the net final cost. Of doing business in Hawaii. Well, right, it's like buying a car, you know, mm -hmm. and all this. Um, but therefore, yes, yeah, so, so that's why I you know, went with the, the, the lowest cost, because mm -hmm. I realized that I'm, I'm wasting about 35% of my solar PV is, is not being used. Mm -hmm. um, so the total cost um, isn't really, you know, you want the low cost, um, how to use it efficiently, but if you take the cost of the system, Hawaii is 5.5 kilowatts per day radiance. That, that, that means that on a typical day, you're going to produce 5.5 kilowatt hours per right. day. Yeah, and times 365 to get your uh, per your year yearly total times the size of your PV system. Mm -hmm. So my um, inverter will output 5.5 kilowatt hour. Mm -hmm. So that times that. Um, then you times it by 20 year life of the system. Some people use 25, I use 20. Mm -hmm. So you get this mm -hmm. large numbers. And then you divide that by the cost, total cost of your system, and that gives you cents per kilowatt hour. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where I came up with the 3.2 cents per kilowatt hour. O over that 20 year. Over that 20 years. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and that's why, if you recall, like um, um, I, I, there was an article I read that, that on Kauai, um, the cost to buy electricity from a solar PV farm is like 11 cents a kilowatt. Mm -hmm. So 11 versus my three, so that means there's a 4x, um, um, what I call profit, that that mm -hmm. um, solar mm -hmm. farm person is making yeah. Yeah. over with the selling utilities. And then Kauai utilities will sell that, you know, 30 cents to the um, uh, residential. Mm -hmm. So you have all these markups. Mm -hmm. So if you do it yourself, you're going to get the lowest possible cost, mm -hmm. uh, which is a three, three cents a kilowatt hour. Yeah. And then you're not totally off-grid because there's at least one day a week when you have this peak demand. And so is that at that point when you engage the utility and, and buy something from them. Right. So, so like, for example, like, um, you know, we had the rainy days this week. Mm -hmm. So on a rainy day, of course, your solar output is diminished significantly. So on those days, I turned the grid power on, connected a grid mm -hmm. to both charge my battery and to use um, the dryer and other um, key um, home. You know, mm -hmm, home, mm -hmm. home, 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 uh, household appliance. Yes. And we were, <coughs> excuse me, talking about the fact that the utility isn't going to make a whole lot of money off of this. I mean, they want to be selling all the time, but when we reduce the demand significantly, say, a hundred thousand homes imitated you, the total demand would go way, way, way down, so that they could shut off either one or two of their least efficient uh, right, those obsolete power, power plants, plants right yeah. they shut down and that saves a heck of a lot of fuel use a heck of a lot of personnel heck of a lot of dis distribution so that cost is is going to go down Correct. just as the uh, downtown power plant has was shut off a few years ago and this Correct. brings us a lot closer to the state's goal of 100 percent clean energy Right. So, so again, that's as, as Howard was saying, you know, earlier. You know, that's why. You know, my point is that you don't need to make your home super efficient. You know, that, mm -hmm. that's what my comment to Howard when I first met him was. You know, mm -hmm. forget this thing about, you know, insulating your home, about, um, you know, testing your air conditioning um, for the leak tightness. Mm -hmm. I'm using my excess PV to power my AC during the day. So in fact. Turn on your air conditioner during the day to achieve cold thermal storage by cooling your room down. Mm -hmm. So when you come home from work, your, your house is already cool. You don't need to turn on your AC, and so that demand goes away. And mm -hmm. that's what I call cold thermal storage because you're chilling select yeah, rooms yeah, at home yeah, yeah. with all this excess you, PV you, electricity, which yep, is just yep. wasted anyway. So. And uh, you mentioned uh, time of use. We Hawaiian Electric has not yet instituted time of use, to my knowledge, has it? I have. Uh, I was one of the. 3,000 oh, that volunteered. Yeah, 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 so yeah, since yeah. May, I'm on time of use with, with Hawaiian Electric. And, um, but but there's, so there's two definitions of time of use. My first definition is time of use of household appliance. Mm -hmm. That means only run your major appliances like the washer dryer between 
um, 10 in the morning and 3 o'clock when you had the peak solar generation. And, so that's and, time of use of key appliances. Okay, and, and you're using your own storage. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then, then the other time of use is yeah is on the ut utility rate mm -hmm. from Hico. Mm -hmm. So, I basically um, would always turn off the grid tie at five o'clock in the evening, mm -hmm. and then turn it on after ten o'clock in the evening mm -hmm. to avoid the peak time of use charge. Yeah. So even on a rainy day, I would still turn it off during that time and then turn it back on at the lower rate. And, um, and to relate that to the duck curve. The Hawaiian Electric's most expensive electricity comes during those, that evening time when the duck's head is up there because they have to turn on uh, additional power plants. They call them uh, bo booster plants, which are less efficient and cost more money, but that's the way they can meet that peak. You are shaving that peak. You're making right. it go away. It goes away, right. Yeah. So there's no, there's no evening and there's no morning peak. It's all mm -hmm. flat, mm -hmm. um, correct. And then you've got a very unique way of heating your water. I think you said your, your solar panels heat to about 135 and then you boost from there using PV. Um, no, no, the, um, the PV will only get it about 135 and okay. I use the solar thermal, which will get it up to, uh, my, my peak so far has been 190. Uh, but typically 165 will last a full night capacity when I supercharge it to that level. Because mm -hmm. the electrical heater will not get it that hot, mm -hmm. uh, but the solar thermal will get it yeah. uh, that hot. Yeah. And again, that's why I, yeah, so I have a, a prayer analysis of, of again, I, I rate the source of renewable energy. So for the hot water, my first main primary source of energy is solar thermal. Mm -hmm. Second backup is the PV electrical. Third backup is the battery electrical. And then the last resort, mm -hmm. fourth source of power is the grid buy. So by having yeah, this, yeah, I, yeah, I pick yeah. which to use to get the cheapest mm -hmm. to the more expensive mm -hmm. use of energy. And by solar thermal, you mean that the sun's heat hits the solar, solar hot panel water panel, and the water is circulating through yeah. it, and it's colored black to absorb maximum right. amount of heat. Water passes through, heats up, and goes down into the tank. That that's solar thermal. Yes. Which many, many, many of us have to have on our roofs. Yeah. But you're not using it, I think, properly where you get, the key is to supercharge it for one full day. So whichever family mm -hmm. size you have, it needs to be heated up to one full mm -hmm. day's so, uh, capacity. So that you'll never have to tap into the for, grid. For the to, grid, to exactly. That. Otherwise you're gonna have this 4.5 kilowatt energy spike, mm -hmm. like at mm -hmm. two o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. to power your, your hot water heater. Yes. And the, the idea is that the hotter the water when you turn on to take a shower, say, the less hot water you're gonna need because right. you're gonna put so a more heck of a lot of cold, cold water right. in there to get your, what, what do we take a shower at, 105, 110, something like that? Or? Yes, so, yeah. so again, so that means your, your hot water tank becomes your battery mm -hmm. hot storage, mm -hmm. so it's a mm -hmm. hot storage battery. Yeah, yeah, that's, I, I always tell people, think of that 80 gallon tank as one great big uh, ba battery. And, and so basically, I use about 16 kilowatt hour per day storage in my hot water tank. Mm -hmm. That will allow me to have the four full baths. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're converting, the, that hot water to, to kilowatt hours. Yes. Yeah. And then, oh, and then, yeah, the, the whole concept of stored cool, where you air condition the heck out of your house during those times when there's abundant, abundant. PV generation, yes. PV generation, you cool it down, and I assume you've got a pretty tight home then, where it's not all leaky like a typical Hawaiian home, or? Um, yeah, it's, they're just, yeah, so it's not just cold air. Mm -hmm. uh, again, this is the word concept of cold thermal storage. Yeah. So it's having thermally absorbent material. So you know how you go in a yeah. hotel room, especially mm -hmm. in Hawaii, it's freezing cold mm -hmm. because they have thermally absorbent material like the granite col you know, um, mm -hmm. countertops, tile floors. Yeah, so you, you, have, you, you don't want to walk barefoot on those right. tile floors. So, so, so again, yeah. so it's not just the cold air. The mm -hmm. concept of cold thermal storage is having, the, so if you were to build a home or room, mm -hmm. I would build it from a cold thermal storage point of view. Well, how, how would you optimize that? What, what would you use to absorb? What materials would you use to absorb? Well, again, like in the kitchen, you have the floor tiles. You can have, um, you know, mm -hmm. the um, granite type counters mm -hmm. or, or metallic surfaces, mm -hmm. all of those mm -hmm. thermally absorbent material, not carpets. Carpets, you know, mm -hmm. worst case are cloth. It's not absorbent. So again, you know, glass material, all thermal you know, absorbent. So um, it's... Interesting. However okay. you want to. But again, the key there is cold thermal storage, not just air, but it's the material mm -hmm. to make the room mm -hmm. stay cold. Mm -hmm. um, and again, therefore, the leakness of the room isn't critical as much as having the right thermally absorbent material. Okay, this, this is another revolutionary concept. I've been in this business for a while. I've never heard of, heard of this. Yeah. 
again, because of the hotel rooms. They're mm -hmm. just so cold, yeah. and it takes forever to heat it back up, mm -hmm. you know? Well, you know, we're getting into the winter months. I live in Manoa, and I get up very early in the morning, and I absolutely must have slippers on. And we've got one more minute. Do, do we have a uh, slide with John's information on it? Oh, okay, John, why don't you give your uh, email uh, contact Yes, if you don't want to contact me, contact me at um, johnoborland at AOL.com. And that's B-O-R-L-A-N-D. Yes. At AOL.com. AOL yeah. As you can tell, John is a very, very, very fascinating uh, young man, and I certainly look forward to associating with you continually in the future to, to look at your... Uh, are you doing this full time? You you promulgating this? Uh, um, no, this is I would say this is a hobby. Hobby. Because okay. my main area is in semiconductor device processing. Uh, but okay. As no, an end user, start, I'm yeah. also mm -hmm, promoting mm -hmm, solar mm -hmm. now. Yes. And you've given three talks to IEEE, the International Energy Efficiency. Yes. So, so on November 15th, I'm giving this talk in Japan at the. Um, mm -hmm. Photovoltaic Science and Engineering Conference, yeah. another international yeah, conference. Definitely so getting the word out. It's a hot to topic. Right people. people are very excited about off-grid, 100% renewable yes, today yes, yes, on a residential yes. level. And on that cheery note, we must leave and bid you a fond adieu. Thank you so much, John Borland. We just barely got warmed up, uh, pun intended, and see you back in two weeks. Think Tech Hawaii, cold green. Good evening.